رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى What is the maximum time until which we can eat during suhoor? What, is, what if the mu'adhin is a couple of minutes late to give the adhan? Should we rely on our watches more than the mu'adhin? As per the first question, the maximum time until which we can eat during suhoor, this is a misconception among the Muslims. They have in their Ramadan calendar, Dhuhr time, Asr time, Maghrib time, which they break their fast, Isha time, and then they have what is known as Imsakiya time, and then Fajr time. And usually it's about 15 minutes between the Adhan of Fajr and the Imsak time. Where does Imsak time come from? I don't know. Beats me. It has nothing to do with Islam, none whatsoever. The Prophet ﷺ used to eat and drink until the Adhan says, Allahu Akbar. So you and I can eat and drink until we hear Allahu Akbar from the Adhan, which announces and declares the break of dawn. To put a buffer zone of 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes is an innovation. It's not part of the religion at all. On the contrary, the Sunnah is to delay the last thing you eat just before the Adhan of Fajr. The more you delay it, the best it is for you as a follower of the Sunnah of the Prophet So there's no time limit. Now the question is, the Mu'adhin is two minutes late. This is not your responsibility. What do you mean? If the time of Fajr is due, either you can tell this by visually looking at the east and being able to distinguish the white thread of Fajr from the white, the black thread of night. So once you see this horizontal white thread of Fajr, this is the break of dawn refrain. If you're unable to do this because we live in the city and the city lights prevent us from doing this, from seeing this, we have to rely on the Mu'adhin because it is his responsibility. Yes, Sheikh, but we have watches. Your watches can be wrong. Your watches are not always accurate and Allah did not tell you to rely on your watches. Either visually rely on seeing the break of dawn and the sunset or rely on the Mu'adhin. Likewise, if I'm waiting to break my fast, I'm at the seaside and the sun sets in the sea in the west where I come from in Jeddah. So I'm at the seaside and I see the sun going down, going down, going down. It disappeared. The Mu'adhin did not call for the Adhan. Who cares? Bismillah. I eat. Shaykh, the Adhan is two minutes, three minutes. Who cares? Allah tells me to eat once the sun sets. And the sun, I can see it. It had set. If I can do this with Fajr, good. If not, then I have to rely on the Mu'adhin. Likewise, in sunset, if I'm at home, the food is on the table. If the Mu'adhin doesn't call the Adhan, I should wait until he calls the Adhan. It's his responsibility. And then I can eat. So I hope this answers the question because the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the Mu'adhin is entrusted and the Imam is a guarantor. A guarantor means he guarantees the validity of my Salat. If I make mistakes, he takes that away from me because I'm following him. Sometimes he sits for the first tashahud, I'm neglectful, I stand up for the third rak'ah, and a few seconds later I open my eyes, everybody's sitting down. Whoops! I sit down immediately. Is my prayer correct? It's valid. Because the Imam carries my, my mistakes. And the Mu'adhin is entrusted. Ha! Ah, he's a minute late and a minute early. It is his responsibility. Allah will hold him questionable. Now, a lot of the Muslims are a little bit flexible, according to their logic. So people say, okay, I woke up late for suhoor. And as I opened my eyes, the Imam started saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
So I rushed to the fridge. I opened it. I took a turkey sandwich and a glass of milk and some uh, uh, hot Tabasco. And I started eating because I knew that I had time until the Imam, uh, the Mu'adhan finishes by saying, La ilaha illallah. Well, bad news, my friend. You have to make up that day. <gasps> Why? Because the adhan started. You are not allowed to eat or drink after the adhan starts, except in one condition. The Prophet said, salam, that if one of you has a cup, a jug, a vessel with liquid, water, coffee, tea, whatever, and the adhan is cold, then he may consume it until he's satisfied. So this means only with drinks, and it's in my hand when the adhan is cold. Not that it's like this and the adhan is cold. It's, Oops, come on, I have to finish this. This is not valid. If it's in my hand and the adhan is cold, I can drink and drink as long as it's in my hand until it's over. Of course not for half an hour or uh, it's in my hand. I, I'm not going to put it down. No, but it means that drink... Even if you finish it, if it's a jug, drink, 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 drink until you're, you're satisfied. Alhamdulillah. Not food. So if I have a big sandwich in my hand and I took a first bite and that is cold, I cannot finish it. Khalas, it's finished. What's in my mouth, I have to swallow it and that's it. And likewise, by the way, excuse my French, if someone is having intercourse and that is cold, it is not permissible for him to continue and say, oh, it's like, Water, I have to continue until I'm satisfied. No, Habibi, you have to stop immediately or you will fast two consecutive months, my friend. It's not worth it. So this is something that people must know. The adhan is not a time for you like a yellow traffic light. That, okay, I can still drive. No, the adhan is a red traffic light. Stop. And if you cross, you'll be fine.